Grand Rising, everybody, let's go. Amen. Enemy is on his rant this morning. Amen. Yeah, come on in. Akiyama Shaba Koto Baka Baba Bansebe Koto Baba Kata Baka Saba Baba. Ah, Grand Rising, Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Those that you know that's over there on YouTube, let them know we're on Facebook exclusively this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord is faithful in his tabernacle. Mighty and amazing. Amen. We're going to count it all joy. Amen. I say we're going to count it all joy. All joy. All joy. The Lord is amazing. Come on, grand rising, grand rising, get up. I see all my peeps on here, all of my dominionaires, all of you that are on this morning. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Amen, amen, amen. From around the world, if it's your first time, put a one up. Let me acknowledge you. Amen, amen, amen. Come on in, everybody. Hopefully you had an amazing weekend. Happy uh, Mother's Day or Happy Mother's Office. I don't think it's just a day because mothers deserve more than just a day. Uh, I, I want to thank God for all of you who hold the office uh, of a mother. And let me tell you this. If you are a woman, you have that innate instinct to be a mother. And um, on Saturday, we talked about being a spiritual mom. And, uh, for, for, and we think it's just for people who doesn't have children or people that just in ministry, but um, you can spiritually parent. Uh, and I really believe that was, that's what God gave us, the ability to multiply and to replenish the earth, to be fruitful and productive in the earth. So, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. We're in the ascension. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're in the ascension, amen, and tonight at 7, we're going to have our ascension service. We're going to celebrate what Jesus did for us in the, in the ascension, and uh, so let's approach his throne. Let's just give God praise for all that uh, he's done and all that he continues to do in and through us mighty and amazing, uh, awesome God. So, Father, we thank you as we approach your throne with honor and all. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your might, your deliverance, your healing, your restoration. We thank you, Father, for uh, your light, Holy Spirit. We thank you for uh, revelation that will come, impartation, the frequency, the vibration of the word. Let it have the preeminence. Father, we thank you. We go now for the wind, the whistle of the Holy Spirit that will do what is needed. This morning, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, 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 amen. Well, let the Lord be magnified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, we see all of you coming in, Atlanta, all of you coming in. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. Um. Uh, Clinton, Mississippi. Wow. I don't know where Clinton is. Amen. Cartersville, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all my peeps, all my family that's on up this morning, those that are traveling back, uh, all, all of those that are uh, hung out with us this weekend. Amazing makes the weekend. Uh, my aunt turned 92. Uh, we were able to celebrate her 92 uh, years old. And I uh, appreciate God for that. Amen. Uh, but let's get into this ascension, understanding this. Um, um, Luke 24 is our anchor scripture. Luke 24. And we're just going to go there real quickly. And I want you to uh, get a great understanding. Jesus walked on the earth for 40 days after he got up out of the grave. 40 days. Somebody type in 40. Jesus walked the earth for 40 days. 40 is a probation. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, um, Bearden, Arkansas, uh, Luke 24 and verse 50. I want you to see this because if you don't get this, you don't get the understanding of the death, burial, and the resurrection. The death, burial, resurrection, the ascension, the in 
the exaltation, <clears throat> the coronation, and the enthronement. Now, I want you to put the ascension, which is the, the exhortation. He was exalted. He, he ascended. He was exalted. He was coronated as king. Just like they coronated King Charles a couple of uh, days ago. He was coronated as king and he was enthroned. He was enthroned. He was seated. He was seated at the right hand of the father. He was seated. He was seated. And um, so this is the essence of the maturation that Jesus went through to have the coronation, the enthronement. And uh, we'll see this for the next uh, several days. We'll see that. I see you, niece. Hallelujah. Now, look at Luke 24, verse 50. And he led them far as Bethany lifted up his hand and blessed them. And it came to pass. He blessed them and parted them and was carried into heaven. Uh, that has to be one of the scriptures you put amongst the ones you hold in your memory and it was carried up into heaven and was carried up into heaven. They worship him, return to Jerusalem with great joy. Now, uh, the Bible says that he's standing there talking to them and all of a sudden he disappears. He's carried up into the heavens and the Bible says that they worship him. They return to Jerusalem with great joy. So that means that he engaged them for 40 days, that after he ascended, they were not afraid. They did not rebuke him. They did not say it was a devil. They did not call out demons. They understood the ascension was necessary. And the Bible says that they worshiped him and there was great joy when they returned to Jerusalem. And they continually in and they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. <laughs> so one of the things we need to start praying is that we have an experience. We have an experience with the revelation of the ascension of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the ascension. It, it is the core element. It is the very essence of who he is and why he came to this earth. The ascension marks Jesus' departure from the interaction with the disciples and with this world and his entry into the realm of God. Now I want you to put that down. His entry into the realm of God. Jesus just didn't translate. Jesus was transformed into a different state of being. Into a different... I want you to be careful to hear the words that I'm saying this morning. Because I don't want to go too deep in... He was transformed into a different state of being. Remember I said, you have to understand being versus doing. Being, the UK is on, being versus doing. I'm going to say it one more time. Being versus doing. What do you mean? Let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8. Look, look what he says. Ah, uh, what a baby cut out about. Look, look at verse five, Romans eight, verse five. He says, uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things after the flesh. So those who are, are trying to do, you keep doing the things after the flesh. He says, for those who are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. What are the things of the flesh? I gotta be, I gotta do, do, do. Do this and you'll do that, you'll be this. Do, do, do. No. He says, but they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. That means when you get into, I wanna use a word and I don't want y'all to say nothing crazy, an altered state 
of being in Christ and that Christ being in you where you alter your state of being and the reality of the consciousness of who you are, who you are in Christ and what Christ has given you. He said, for to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He says, you're going to die trying to do who you're supposed to be. It is not works. It is the grace. It is the gift of God. He says, but he says, because the carnal mind is enmity or an enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. When you keep trying to do, I got to be holy. I got to be sanctified. No, no, no. Just be it. Don't do it. Be. See, being versus doing. When you do, you always find fault, failure in doing. But when you be, this kingdom operate on being. On being. Are y'all hearing me? So the flesh, we cannot please God. The Bible says in verse 8, the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If you're in the spirit and the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of God, he is not him. He says, look, you've got the spirit in you. You know, we keep get, trying to get the Holy Ghost. If you... Ask the, the Father to, to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Spirit. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life because of righteousness. Come on, I want to read a little bit this morning. Come on, let's get in your word. But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you. But if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. If the spirit of Christ or the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall quicken or raise up Christ from the dead, shall quicken, make alive your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Skip down to, uh, well, verse 13 says we have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Through the Spirit, we mortify this. Verse 14, for as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See, if you're led by the Spirit, if you understand how to operate in the Spirit, if you understand how to live by the Spirit, the Bible says you are the sons of God. You have not received the Spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the Spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Now we know in Acts, the Bible says in Acts 1, Acts Luke 24, 50, and Acts 1, 1 through 11, in our anchor scriptures where the Bible says that Jesus is telling the disciples to wait till they be endued with power from on high. Why did Jesus ascend? Why, is it, why was it necessary? Why Jesus couldn't stay here with us? He was working miracles, healing, giving power, but Jesus was relegated to one region. He says, I have to go because the Holy Ghost won't come. John 16, he says, it's a promise from the Father that the, it, he says, it is expedient that I leave. It is necessary that I go away because if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. He says, I've been locked in one locale, but now the Father's Spirit wants to be shed abroad in the hearts of all men. He said, it is necessary for me to go. I have to be coordinated and thrown, exalted to my place. And the Holy Spirit now comes and do his part in the earth. That now that Holy Ghost can come upon all men. In the last day, the Bible says he will pour his spirit up upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, your old men, your everybody is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody is going to come into the knowledge. He said, in the last day, I'm going to pour it out. And I'm not going to be prejudiced on who I pour it out on. I'm going to pour it out on everybody. This next revival 
It's not just a revival of the youth, not just a revival of the old. It's a revival inclusive of everybody. It is according to Joel, the Bible says, and Luke, that he's going to pour his spirit upon all flesh, upon all flesh. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Psalms 24. Uh, Psalms 24. Hallelujah. He had to ascend so the Holy Ghost could come. Now let's go back to John 16 and hold your place in Psalms 24. Because I just heard the Holy Ghost say, read that. Let's go to John. Uh, let me get it there. John 16. Look what he says. Hallelujah. I think I want to go to John. John 14. John 14. Let's read this one. John 14. John 14. Look what he says in verse ah, in verse 19. Yet in a little while the world see me no more, but you see me because I live and you live also. And that day you know I'm in the Father and you're in me. And he have my commandments and keepeth them and love me. He loveth me and shall be my Father and I will love him. And he says, if any man loves me, hallelujah. Um, uh, he said, uh, uh, if any man loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Wow. Verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance and bring all things to your remembrance. Revelation is just the Holy Spirit bringing things to your remembrance and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you. <laughs> he says the Holy Ghost is going to come and teach you all things. He says the Holy Ghost is going to come and teach you all things. Now let's go to uh, John 16. Look what he says. Look what he, look who, 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 Verse 7, John 16, verse 7. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. He says, If I don't go away, the comforter won't come. Jesus says, Until I get to my place of coordination, the Holy Spirit can't come. There's a reason why most of you cannot experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Because something has to leave before the Holy Ghost can come. He says, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. Until you let go certain things, certain things can come. Until you let go poverty, wealth can come. Until you let go sickness, Healing can't come until you let go denomination, religion, Holy Spirit can't come until you let go. Holy Spirit, he says, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him to you. He says, if I, if I leave, if I depart, I'm the reason we need Jesus in heaven is because of the Holy Ghost. And the reason most denomination and churches can experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit is because they won't let Jesus go to his place of victory, his place of incarnation, his place of enthronement. They're holding on to Jesus and the comforter won't come. In Acts 19, Paul asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, we don't even know if there be a Holy Ghost. And he says, where were you baptized then? 
He says unto John baptism. He said, we don't even know if there be a Holy Ghost. Oh, let's go there. Because I hear y'all. I hear this cooking in your mind. Come here. There are whole denominations that don't even believe in the power of the, 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 of the Holy Spirit. And we don't even understand how they can operate in the things that God has given them. Uh, because, hmm, look, look what he says. Look what Paul, Paul says it, at the church at Ephesus. Look what he says uh, in verse 2, Acts 19, 2. He said, and he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Because most people believe you get the Holy Ghost when you get saved. There's another. He says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Wow. He's talking to believers. And he says, have you received the Holy Ghost? And he, they said unto him, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He is saying, you believe, and they was like, we ain't heard of no Holy Ghost. Come on, what y'all going to do with this scripture? He says, when you believed on Jesus, did you receive the Holy Ghost? And they said, we, we haven't heard of no Holy Ghost. Oh my God. And then he says, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, John. John was baptizing people, but they had never heard of a Holy Ghost. And then Paul then said, Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people they should believe on him which shall come after him that is Christ so can we surmise that John never baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost And up until Jesus, he baptized Jesus, what name was he baptizing in? Okay, I need somebody to help me here. And when they heard this, they were baptized, there it goes, in the name of the Lord Jesus. They wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus. They wasn't baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost. John. After this, the Bible says, when they heard this, they was baptized in the name of Jesus. Y'all want to pull me all out for my message this morning. Help me. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And when Paul laid his hand, these were believers who have not submitted to the power of the Holy Ghost. Nor were they baptized in Jesus' name until Paul came. But he says, since you believe. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Something had to leave before the Holy Ghost could come. Now let's go to Psalms real quick. I got to hurry up. Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Hallelujah. It, the, it was necessary for Jesus to leave. So the Holy, he says, if I don't go away, the Holy Ghost won't come. And until y'all stick, bu, ali, abo, oba, iganu, ho, hale, venka, ikona, mahaya, until you get rid of falsehood, 
It was like we we didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. And there that's the language you use in a lot of areas of your life. When we ask certain things, it's like the Holy Ghost is nowhere around. It's because you've got something in the place of the Holy Ghost. You mean the Holy Ghost can help me with my marriage? The Holy Ghost can help me with my children? What do you have in that place? The Holy Ghost can help you remove anxiety, fear, worry, depression. What do you have that place that the Holy Ghost can't come? We, we haven't even heard the Holy Ghost can help us in that area. Look what he says. Hmm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell. For he had founded on the seas and established on the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? He with what? Clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted his soul to vanity. Now, here it goes. I, I want you to um, uh, go, go down. You read the whole thing. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. He had David. decrees that he is the king of glory. He is in his ascended place because he is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this clean king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. David already saw. David saw this. David saw his day. David saw and prophesied. David saw in the realm of the spirit. He says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory. He is decreeing that he is the king of glory. Who is this king of glory? This is the psalm of his enthronement. This is Old Testament prophetic language that he is the king of glory. Go to Psalms 47. These are enthronement psalms. Psalms of enthronement. Psalms of enthronement. Look what he says. For the Lord most terrible, he is the great king of all the earth. He is the great king of all the earth. Verse 2, he is the great king of of all the earth. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto him with a voice of what? Triumph. A voice of triumph. He said he is the king of glory. He says, sing. God is going up with the shout, the Lord, uh, with the sound of the trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises unto the king. Sing praises for God is king of all this. Sing praises. God reign over the heathen. Sing praises. He is the king. So put these in your notes. Psalms 24. Psalms 47, Psalms 68, and Psalms 110 are all enthronement psalms. They talk about his enthronement. David. You know, Jesus is the seed and the root and the offspring of David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, What does that have to do with us? Because, remember I said being versus doing? The Bible says in Ephesians 2 that when Jesus was seated, we were seated. We have been seated with him in his enthronement. Now there's a lot to unpack. I showed you that we are sons. He's a son. The Bible says that when we're led by the Spirit, it gives us the power to become the sons. He ascended. The Bible says that when he got up, we got up. We were seated in the heavenly places. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. Let's go to first, second Peter. Let me see where I want to go. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day. Um, 
Bible says that he has seated us in heavenly places in Ephesians. The Bible says he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Now, let's look at Ephesians 3, 1 and 3. Ephesians 1 and 3. Then I'll go to uh, Peter a little later. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Where? 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 In heavenly places. He has blessed us with all. Okay. Being versus doing. Being versus doing. Who have blessed us, E.D., with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Being. Now, here we go. Do I pray for a blessing? I'm asking you a question. Do we pray for blessings? I'm waiting on the answer. Y'all know y'all um, feed is a little delayed. So I'm, when I when I see the first, um, do we pray? For blessings. Who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The, the Amplifier says, <clears throat> May blessings, laudation, praise, eulogy be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who have blessed us in Christ in every spiritual uh given by the Holy Ghost blessing in the heavenly realm. We are blessed. We are blessed. With all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. Bless me. Bless me, bless me. No, 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 no. Being versus doing. Being versus doing. As a man thinketh in his heart. So if you think you need to pray for blessings, guess what's going to happen? That's what you're going to, you're going to, you're going to fashion and form yourself. That you always have to pray for a blessing. He has blessed us according he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. That we shall be holy without blame before him in love. According as he has chosen us. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation before the foundation of the earth. My God. Predestined. <laughs> Predestined. So now you got to clear up. Now you got to get rid of what we've been taught. Do, do, do. And just be, be, be. Jesus was not trying to be the son of God. Jesus was walk up to the Sanhedrin, to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and said, I'm the son of God. He wasn't trying to do. He was just being. He was being. He was being. Let the rich or let the poor say I'm rich. Stop doing it and be it. Stop saying the negative and be what I called you to be. From the foundation of the earth. That's why Jesus had to ascend. That's why Jesus had to get in his place. That's why Jesus said it's necessary for me to go away. And then he's saying, look, let this mind be in you. Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you that was also in Jesus. Who thought it not robbery to be called equal with God? I don't 
you'll rob God of his deity, of his power, of the essence of his majesty when I include myself in his family? How dare you think that? It would be a disgrace for me to say to my father, my mother, I can't be your child because I might dishonor you. No, the very, the, my very birth is to bless them. You think your father wants you to struggle and strain? No. Be who he called you to be. Let the poor say, I'm rich. Let the sick say, I'm healed. Be what you desire. What you desire, be it. Don't do it. Be it. Because in your doing, remember, you're minding the things of the flesh. You're minding the things of the flesh. The ascension is about elevating your consciousness. You are coming into a different state of being. And he gives you that power. He gives you that power to be it. Stop struggling. With the flesh. We've been taught, do this. You got to do this. Now, I'm not negating fasting and praying and reading your word and all of that. That brings illumination, enlightenment. But you're already what God has given you. You could be like the church of Ephesus. We don't even know if there'll be a Holy Ghost. We, we don't even know. We don't even know. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can you be that? Renew your mind. Romans 12, y'all know that. <laughs> Put that in your notes. And be ye renewed. Ephesians 4 said, be re renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans 12 says, if you're going to transform anything, you got to renew your mind. So the ascension, because we're already there positionally, we have to ascend there mentally. We have to get there mentally because he's already seated us in heavenly places. He's already blessed us with all spiritual gifts in heavenly places. Now we have to change the way we think. The consciousness awareness of what we think, say, and how we be causes the do. It's not the doing that causes the being. It's the being that usurps the doing. We have to ascend. In our mind. Mentally. Romans 12. Then go to Ephesians 4. Be renewed in the spirit. Of your mind. In the spirit of your mind. So the essence. Of the ascension. The exaltation. The coronation. And the enthronement. We're going to end unpack that a little bit more tonight. I can't wait for tonight. My head is about to, amen. You know, when you be it, the angels are actively engaging then because now they see a son. They don't see somebody knee bent, body bowed. They don't see somebody struggling and straining. They don't see nobody upset. No, they, hey, hey, they respond. They respond to the sun. Jesus said, don't you know I could call a legion of angels? Why? He understood. He understood that being make the doing easy. Are you hearing me? I see it. So, I'm finished. Let me get off here. 
We'll say the rest of this for tonight. Y'all got to hop on tonight. And um, man, uh, there's going to be an ascension seat. You're going to sow. You're going to hear the Holy Ghost. You're going to pray and ask the Holy Ghost, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. You're going to pray about it. We're going to mark this day, May 15th, as the ascension that I'm ascending mentally. I'm ascending. I'm a kumakati. I'm a kuna le minga do huka le leven sebel kura manda. I'm ascending. I've ascended to the place and I'm ascending in my mind and my being make the doing easy. Are you here? All right. So tonight, the doors open at six. I'd be at yeah, I did. I did a whole uh, a whole series on think it, say it, be it. Think it, say it, be it. It's an old series. I don't even know if we can find it, but I did a whole. It was an intense series. Uh, think it, say it, be it. And, um, yeah, but tonight we're going to unpack that and we're just going to let God do what he needs to do. I still have a whole lot of things to do. It's going to be supernatural. I'm going to be laying hands. I'm going to be prophesying uh, what the Lord has given us. And, uh, this is just me going out of my spirit. I'm all out of my notes. I didn't do anything I wanted to do today, but amen. Uh, we didn't talk about the physics of ascension. We didn't talk about um, the resurrection and the ascension. We didn't. Uh, there, there's a lot of things I need to talk about. Um, and um, y'all got to catch me tonight. And maybe the Lord will uh, let me um, continue it the rest of the week. Don't forget, some of you should have already received uh, your book. Uh, the rest of you, your books shall be coming to you. Uh, my staff uh, was Pastor Andrews at the uh, post office for, you know, um, all day, one day, and just trying to get all the books out. So I appreciate all of you who order it, who ordered it, and um, hopefully you're reading it. And um, thank you. Thank you again. Um, let's make this book go number one and a uh, bestseller and um if you get the book you should have a little note in there saying take a picture upload it and hashtag accessing ancient portals or my name and uh or inbox us let us know let us see you got the book and uh, that way we'll generate some more marketing um visibility for our book amen 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 well i love you with the love of the lord uh, may the Lord, Julia uh, Johnson says she got her book. Mother DeBose got her book. Amen. Um, so y'all just snap a picture and uh, let's, let, let me see you with your book. Um, uh, we're going to probably start another. The book is awesome. Thank you. We're going to start a power up book. <laughs> yeah, we, we can, we can, we can have that. Uh, we're going to probably start another mentoring me. Uh, Probably right in the fall, right in the fall, maybe, maybe September, October. We're working on that. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, don't forget, um, 10 more days, we'll have our Pentecost service. It's going to be phenomenal. We got a surprise for you. Phenomenal. And then uh, Wanda says she posted her picture. And then October, October 13th through the 15th, we're going to be in Plano. I'm telling y'all. Our registration is uh, the Bundix have their book, whole church getting their books. Um, registration is filling up and, um, you know, a lot of churches are coming. So y'all go ahead and register. Uh, just secure your spot um, for October 13th through the 15th. We'll be back in Plano at the Hin uh, Hilton Granite Park. Um, so go ahead and do that. How do you apply for the mentoring me? Uh, just call to the church and say, I want to be a part of the mentoring me. Put you on the list. Put you on the list. A lot of people are saying that you, they have their book. Uh, amen. All right. Uh, 
Somebody already posted theirs on Facebook. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Got my book and I'm coming. I see you, Doc. Uh, yes, Marla. Go ahead and post it. Um, yeah, okay. Very good. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Y'all, 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 y'all amazing. Amen. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you, your children, your household, your marriage, your finances. May the Holy Spirit, the wind, and the, and the sound of the Holy Spirit begin to blow over you for supernatural things. May healing invade your body. May you be healed, be delivered, be set free, be wealthy, be rich, be whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for what you would do in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Mother Delaney got her book, amen, amen. Y'all have a supernatural week. Uh, tonight at 7, tonight at 7, we are, we are ascending, we're ascending, 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 and we're letting God do supernatural things through us. I'll see you tonight at 7.